face it, you probably don't really fit in. Sounds like harsh words, doesn't it? Well, we're going to discuss that train of thought. I felt it, you felt it, a lot of people have felt that we don't fit. And there's a reason for it. But first, I want you to understand how Jesus felt when he was rejected. This is Pat Love from Love Healing Hearts, getting ready to read to you from Isaiah 53, verse 3. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken and smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Now for those of you who don't really understand what it means when we say with his stripes, if you can look back on the days of slavery, when the slave masters would take this, this whip and beat the slaves' backs until the flesh just split open and beat them and beat them and it wouldn't stop. I mean, they could be bleeding and they'd still be beating them. I never could understand how people could be that cruel. But they did that to Jesus Christ. And check it out. Jesus is the Son of God. Do you hear me? God and Jesus are one. So can you imagine your own creation treating you that way? In return for your love, compassion, and miracles of healing? Okay, anyway, let's move on to the point. This is why I honestly believe some of us were never meant to fit. I wasn't. You weren't. And it hurts. Sometimes we grow up and we don't fit in with our families or we feel like our mother or father wish we weren't born or maybe we went to school and we were always made fun of. Were you made fun of? Yeah, I was too. And you wonder why. Why do people get a kick, a charge out of hurting people? That will never, never compute with me. <laughs> but thank God for his healing because you don't have to live with that pain for the rest of your life. God can make it go up in a puff of smoke as if it never happened to you, as if those cruel words were never said to you. I'm a witness because he healed my scars from my childhood. Do you hear me? So when I say that we were probably never meant to fit in, this is why. When you fit in too well, you kind of disappear into the, the whole picture. You fit, you blend your colors, everything just works in sync with your surroundings. But here's the problem. God didn't create you to remain in that surrounding. God didn't create you to be the laughing stock of every joke, the butt end of every joke. He didn't create you to be mistreated and rejected and hurt. However, he made you so unique. He put so many magical formulas and ingredients and combinations into your psyche, into your, your makeup, into your personality because of the way he wants to use you. Are you listening to me? So when you feel like you're not 
fitting. You're not supposed to. Quit trying. You know, if they call you a geek, thank God for the brains, baby. If they call you ugly, thank God for your beauty. I know it sounds kind of weird for me to say it like that. But when you look at the kids that were picked on the most, they were either pretty, ugly, I mean not ugly, pretty, intelligent, very quick and very good at what they did. Um, maybe they were a little, you know, uh, standoffish because they were shy. But maybe they had a beautiful voice or great acting talent or they could draw. There was always something that they did that made them stand out. And because they stood out like a sore thumb, they were treated as such by those who were probably a little resentful that they were not given some of those gifts that come by you so easily. Okay? So understand some of the reasons you are not supposed to fit in. Number one, if you live in an area where there's a lot of fighting and a lot of uh, maybe gang activity, drug dealing, whatever, and you were raised maybe by parents who don't talk that talk, so they look at you and call you square, or they think that you're trying to talk uh, phony because you don't talk like the rest of them. Well, see, when you look at the end for the rest of them, most of them are going to either end up in prison or single family homes or going through, drug, you know, drug addiction therapy or, you know, they're going to be going through a lot of hiccups in their lives. But you were given certain gifts to enable you to rise above. And that was never comfortable for you. So they didn't fit with you. And you were not a fit for them. And that was your protection. Because you can look back and say, you never spent a day in jail. You were never hooked on drugs. You never committed a felony. You're not on the run. You never had your house raided. I mean, you can go down the list of things that you didn't have to endure. But, yes, you had to endure being made fun of and being rejected. Okay. Here's another thing. Some of you were very, very good readers. Correct? You could read faster than some people could speak. And they hated you for it. And who do you think you are, Mr. Smarty Vance? Right? Or four eyes. Hello. But guess what? <laughs> when they come to fill out that application, they're going to have to sit across the desk from you. And you're going to be the one deciding whether you're going to hire them or not because you're the boss. And they're the hireling. Think about it now. Think. So don't think that because of all the things you had to go through and all the, the mistreatment and the unfair ways the kids rejected you and pushed you away and, and said, no, I don't want to hold their hand and I don't want them on my team and they can't do this and they can't do that or they're too ugly or they're too skinny or they're too fat or they're too short or they're too tall or whatever. It's always going to be something. And sadly, not only with children, but with adults. Even sadder, not only with adults, but with born-again Christians. There will always be a group sitting in the corner laughing at you. But when you look down through the years and you watch those people, the same ones that are laughing at you, every time you get up to make a testimony, or whatever it is you're doing. They're the ones that are going to be backsliding at some point in their life. Getting pregnant out of wedlock. Getting somebody pregnant out of wedlock. Getting hooked on drugs. Falling away from the body of Christ. Getting arrested. 
It's always going to be some mess in their life. But they're the first ones to laugh at you, aren't they? So don't, you know, God always says, don't be happy at another man's calamity, even if you think they deserve it. Don't go there because you don't want to judge lest ye be judged. All right. But just know that God will handle that. You stay on point. You mind your business. You stay in your purpose on your pathway to your destiny. And you be diligent, seeking God's face every step of the way. And here's another thing I want to I want to tell you you can do. And this will work like a charm. And I know from experience it works every time. When people are tired of you, don't like you, or they don't want to deal with you for whatever reason. They hurt your feelings. They may do something that's really unfair or that's really underhanded, catty, or backstabbing. And you wonder, what the heck did I do to offend these people? What is their trip? Don't worry about their trip. That's in God's hands. What you deal with is that hurt you're feeling right there. That hurt that's right in that chest of yours. As soon as you feel it rise up, you feel that pain coming on because somebody did something nasty. You, you say these two things, Lord, help me forgive and take the hurt out right now. So that you don't waste an ounce of your energy, a second of your time, and a cell of your brain matter Dwelling on that nonsense. That's not even worth it, baby. Focus. Move ahead. Keep on trucking, baby. Because God has got a plan for you. And God is the one who promotes one and puts another down. You be the one being promoted. You be the one living out your plan. You be the one that stays on God's good side, reaping all the benefits because you're operating according to his word. You are forgiving. You are loving in spite of. You're doing good to your enemies. Do you hear me? You're not judging. You're not resenting. You're not allowing the root of bitterness to spring up in your heart and soul. You're allowing the Holy Spirit to cleanse your mind of all negative thoughts to silliness. You refuse to waste your time because God has a bigger plan for you. And you don't have to stoop down to nonsense when God's got a high level for you to rise to. Okay? Now, you be encouraged and you stop worrying and fretting about them not liking you. Because guess what? That doesn't matter. That's neither here nor there in the scheme of things according to God's plan. You hear me? So quit crying. Quit fretting. Now, if you have to cry, cry to God. Don't get on that phone and bicker. To a willing, nosy ear, you go to God and you handle first things first. Lord, help me forgive and Lord, take the pain out. You take care of those two things and then Lord, heal my heart. Help me focus on what I'm supposed to focus on and vindicate me. Sometimes you just want God to show the world he's on your side. That's okay. He doesn't mind doing that. You just stay on your path. Stay in your purpose. And you will see that God will raise you up for everybody to take notice of you. The one that never fit in. Hello.